so for today's lesson, um, we're going to be still working with integers, aka positive and negative numbers, whole numbers. And uh, today's lesson is going to be a review of subtracting negative numbers. And before we go into subtracting, I am very quickly going to recap the three <clears throat> different scenarios that we talked about for adding. Um, the first one takes two seconds. Scenario one is when all positives. We don't even need to touch that one. That's like three plus two. Positive plus a positive is just a bigger positive. Uh, all right. The second thing was if you had all negatives. So if you're adding, let's say, two different numbers, we'll say negative four plus negative seven. Uh, we can even throw in a third number, plus negative three. If your numbers are all negative, one way I explained this was think of it as if you owe someone money, as if you are in debt. Um, you have $4 of debt, that's represented by negative four. $7 of debt, that's represented by negative seven. And $3 of debt represented by negative three. In total, you have $14 of debt. So when you're adding all negative numbers, it's similar to adding all positives in that you add the values for seven and three and your final answer is negative. Um, I also had showed this with integer chips, right? You've got four red chips, seven red chips, three red chips, in total 14 red negative integer chips. All right, and the last one was the big one, and it's when you have a mix of numbers. So like you're adding a positive with a negative. So for example, three plus negative seven. And there's a couple ways you can think of this. One way is just straight up understanding the rule. The rule states that if you're adding a positive and a negative, forget about the signs, treat them as if they're both positive and just find the difference. So here, the difference of, we're gonna pretend that this negative seven is just regular old seven. The difference between seven and three, seven minus three is four. Now, how do I know if my final answer is positive or negative? I just go back to the original numbers, three and negative seven, and which one has a bigger absolute value? This one does. Seven is bigger than three, and since the seven is negative, my answer is negative. Another way I explained this was, think of it as money. Three dollars and seven dollars of debt. Well, the net of that is you'd have four dollars of debt. You'd be able to pay three dollars of that seven dollar debt, but you'd still owe four. The debt is bigger than the not debt. The last way I explained it was I gave that silly example of when I was a kid um, playing army men with my brother and he had one color, I had another color. We lined them up similar to integer chips. You've got positive integer chips and you've got negative ones. And whichever one has more chips, so cancel out, cancel out, cancel out. There's four negatives left. That's why my answer is negative four. Okay, so the reason that I spend another bit of time going over the rules for addition is because we are going to use them today when we subtract integers. At least this is how I teach it. I know that different teachers go through this different ways. I feel like this is, to me, this makes the most sense. So here we go. When you subtract integers, yesterday we talked about, all right, what happens if they're all positive? What happens if they're all negative? What happens if you have one of each? Well, we don't need to go through three different scenarios today. What I'm about to talk about applies always, every time you're subtracting, no matter if it's a positive and a negative, or two negatives, or no matter what, always, 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 here is the way that I teach this. If you have a subtraction problem, change the subtraction problem to an addition problem. And then once you have an addition problem, just follow the addition rules that we just learned. But the big part of this is, what? How do you change a subtraction problem to an addition problem? Well, it's very simple. Very, very simple. You just need to remember three important words. The three words are add the opposite. All right, say it with me. Add the opposite. 
opposite. Um, this is how you can change a subtraction problem into an addition problem. And I will explain what this means through an example. So the first example we'll hit is 10 minus 7. Now, you're probably sitting there saying, I know what 10 minus 7 is. It's 3. I just want to prove to you that add the opposite works for every single subtraction problem. So let's do exactly what this says. We're going to change our subtraction to add. Okay? And we're going to add the opposite. So what's the opposite of 7? I'll use a different color to really highlight it. The opposite of positive 7 is negative 7. And what's 10 plus negative 7? Well, think about your rules for adding integers. When the signs are different, just find the difference between the two. So 10 minus 7 is 3. And since the 10 is bigger than a 7 and the 10 is positive, my answer is positive. So how do you add the opposite? You don't touch that first number. You change the subtraction to addition, and you add the opposite of whatever the second number is. The second number in this case was 7, so our addition problem was plus negative 7. Let's look at another one. Um, second example, remember our rule is add the opposite. So I know that I'm going to keep my first number the same, and I'm going to add the opposite of whatever the second number is. The second number is positive 12. And we're going to add the opposite. The opposite of positive 12 is negative 12. So now I've changed my subtraction problem into an addition problem. And now all I need to do is use my addition rules. My addition rules from yesterday say that if the numbers are different, like I have a positive and a negative, just find the difference between the two. The difference between 12 and 3 is 9. And since the 12 is bigger and the 12 is negative, my final answer is going to be negative. So that means that 3 minus 12 is negative 9. If you want a visualization of that, use a number line. We're starting at positive 3 and we're subtracting. Subtraction moves to the left on a number line and we're moving back 12 spaces. If you counted back 12 spaces, whatever, you could actually count it, where would you end up? You'd end up at negative 9. But instead of sitting there and using a number line for every problem, just use your addition rules. And for subtraction problems, make them addition problems. All right, we're going to do two more examples. Here is our next one. <clears throat> negative 8 minus negative 13. Oh, I have a subtraction problem. See, subtract. So I'm going to not do any subtraction. I'm going to change it to addition and then just use my addition rules. So uh, keep the first number the same, change it to addition. We're going to add the opposite. What's the opposite of negative 13? Positive 13. So this subtraction problem can be written as this addition problem. And now using my addition rules, since I have a positive and a negative, I just find the difference between 13 and 8, which is 5, and then I compare my numbers. 13 is bigger than 8, and since the 13 is positive, my answer, my final answer will be positive. So 8, I mean, excuse me, negative 8 minus negative 13 is 5. That's a weird one, but it's true. Um, and we just proved it by changing the subtraction to add the opposite. All right. Last example, we've got 5 minus negative 4. So what does that mean? It means 5, change the subtraction to addition, 5 plus, and then add the opposite. The opposite of negative 4 is positive 4. So that's weird. 5 minus negative 4 really just means 5 plus 4, and 5 plus 4 is positive 9. So that means that 5 minus negative 4 is equal to positive 9. Um, hopefully this way of going through subtraction helps you. I'm also showing you how important it is to understand how to add negative numbers. If you can add them, 
you surely can subtract them as long as you can change your subtraction to addition. Um, so for today, you've got some practice problems, same as yesterday. Um, you're going to work through those, post uh, a picture of your work to Google Classroom, and then we'll go from there. Otherwise, happy day doing math. Bye-bye.